<laughs> Welcome back to the channel, everybody. In this video, we are going to start prepping for siding. As you know, there's a whole lot of things that have to be done before we actually install the siding. For example, right now I am air sealing. I'm using the Sega Fentrum tape. It came in a six inch roll. So that jig that you just saw a moment ago, that was strictly to cut this down to six inch or to three inch pieces. I don't need six inch pieces. I need three inch pieces. I don't want to waste it. And it's just unnecessary. Also, it's like really not cheap. Way back at the beginning of this series, you saw us install the mud sill directly to the concrete. The reason for that is because the pressure treated wood is made for that. And the foam, um, what is that, sill seal? It's not a very good air sealer. Our plan was always to seal the zip to the concrete. Now the zip is our weather resistive barrier or water resistive barrier, whatever people are calling it nowadays, WRB. And as the Swiss call it, our zip is our wind barrier as well. So that is a long winded way of saying that our plan was to tape the zip to the concrete and we we're using the Siga product. It's a Fentrum tape, comes in a six inch roll. The jig you saw at the beginning of this video was just to cut it in half. There's no reason to use a full six inches, you know, three inches on the zip, three inches on the concrete. My method was snap a line one inch up, attach that first and roll it. That's what you see me doing here. Now I'm taking the little plastic, I call it the SIGA credit card. It does not work at diners club locations. I have learned the hard way. That was very embarrassing. But basically that little card allows me to fold the tape to the underside or end grain of the zip around the mud sill and onto the concrete. This Fentrum tape from Sega uses an acrylic adhesive that is pressure sensitive. Really interesting if you look online and you see how these tapes work. Basically, they flow into the textured surface of the panel. So I roll that first, but I use the card, this is called squeegeeing it, and notice that I'm making it follow the contour of the zip panel. I really want it to adhere to the end grain, quote unquote, of the zip panel itself. So if I put my fingers under that card, and I go ahead just like that and I ride it. Now, obviously I wish that would have been cut a little straighter, but it is what it is and it is not what it is not. Basically, you get the point. Now we're adhered. Okay, so let's get into layout for siding. We're using LP Smart Side, and it's a seven and seven eighths inch panel. They want a one inch overlap. So I went ahead and just made a couple of story poles that are six and three quarter inch reveals. So that gives me an inch and an eighth overlap. The great thing about story poles is they kind of just make things idiot proof. Where as long as we have a good mark to set one of our layout marks against, then we can just go into autopilot and we can just mark the wall. If you remember early on, we set our wall heights with the laser. Based on that, as we go up, theoretically, right, we should be nice and level. When we snapped a line for our overhangs on the top of that wall, remember those were pre-built, that line is now dead straight. So if that line is parallel to level, then guess what? It's also level. So that means we can use the soffit as our control point. You're good. Right, okay, so here's our control point. 159, 159 and a quarter. Now I can just on each side of the window Butt my tape to the soffit and mark 159 or 159 inches and one quarter. That is the top of a layout mark. So I'm gonna do it on this side of the window, on that side of the window, etc. We'll end up snapping a control line up above as well. But then layout is easy. Could have just cut a board that and just butted it. <laughs> Yep. So why didn't we just set up the laser and just shoot control points? I mean, isn't that just a good way to verify? Uh, yeah, it absolutely is. Knock yourself out. We've already done it once. So what's the point? Also, we want our siding to be parallel to the soffit. So quite frankly, at this point, I'm not going to do any cheating, even if things were just slightly off. I want everything to be parallel to the soffit. And if you're remodeling, you definitely do not want to shoot level. You want to go parallel to windows, doors, and soffit. That way, it looks good. 
Of course, we're gonna snap some lines. Essentially, that blue line, our 159, 159 and a quarter, that's our control line now. We just butt the layout stick to it and mark our six and three quarters. No addition, no mental gymnastics, so to speak. We just get into a rhythm, right? That blue line, that's like, what? That's benchmark, that's control point. Uh, one other thing just to mention, I did lay out the siding so it will hang down below the mud sill a couple of inches. And here we are at my mistake. <laughs> so this foundation is flipped or reversed from the one next door. Well, I cut out or bucked out the concrete for a sliding glass door in the same spot on both houses. Hey, shall we post our mistakes? So that sliding glass door over there should have been here, but uh, we got it. Thanks to the Hilti. Boy, we don't use this thing very often, but when we do. So I should have got video. The, guy, the dozer operator just came over and pulled it right out for us, so we'll find a home for that. Hey, happy Tuesday, everybody. It's been an extremely stressful day for all of us, but we're making it, we're making it. Oops, this sliding glass door goes on the opposite end of the house. Uh, as of the voiceover, we just actually poured that buck out yesterday. So anyway, that's just how life goes sometimes. And I do not want to relive that whole experience. That was not fun doing those foundations. One other thing to mention, these are all top marks. We mark top, so LP siding, fiber cement siding, they're so consistent that if we just snap lines and make the top straight, the bottom will be straight as well. In the old days with cedar, we didn't trust that. And so we would make ourselves gauges because you wanted the bottom, you know, course to course to be consistent. The boards themselves weren't always exactly the same, but the smart side comes out exactly seven and seven eighths. Okay, so now we're around the side. I have to shoot control points in this case. So what I did is I set up the Stabila LAR 350. It's a rotary laser. The same laser that we shot our walls in below and also the foundation grade, by the way. I set that on the foundation next door. There's no rhyme or reason to where I set it, except that I wanted it higher than that upper step down. Because I'm gonna snap a line across the whole wall, I wanna get it up there far enough that it can serve as a reference point. So I mark at one end, I forget, you could count the panels. I don't remember, is it 42 feet, something like that? I don't know, I'm not gonna count them. Then I'm gonna go to the bottom of the hill with my ladder. Now I love that little giant ladder because I can legally lean it against the wall and it's got a little flip out thing so I can lean it on a corner. Okay, so I now have control points across the building, three spots. Since I'm at this corner, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my layout stick and I'm just gonna mark around the corner and then I can measure from the mark closest to the laser mark that distance. Whatever that distance is, is I'm gonna go at my other two marks and I'm gonna make sure I put a new mark representing the top of the siding. So there you can see, I'm just gonna keep marking my six and three quarters until I get close to my control point. Out comes the tape measure, measure it, now I'm gonna go up the building, or up, whatever. Whatever I'm trying to say. Timmy doesn't know. I'm just making this up as I go along. By the way, those are the high specs safety glasses. I highly recommend them. Inexpensive, very comfortable. And for the first time in my 45 years, I'm actually wearing prescription. Okay, so back to the control marks. So from the laser mark, I'm measuring down whatever that was. I don't remember what it is. Remember, always second guess, never second guess yourself twice, but always double check yourself twice. Now, normally I would not snap a line all the way across the building in this case, but I was able to eyeball through my center control point and I could see that I was plenty straight. And just because I don't believe me either. <laughs> Trust but verify, as the Russians used to say, until Ronald Reagan stole that expression and then Jake Bruton stole that expression. Now it's just a good habit to be in, right? Just always be verifying. There you can see above my hand, my CP, that's my circled control point. We measured down, I think it was like three and seven eighths. My blue line is now my benchmark. So same thing, I'm just gonna go next to each of those step downs and I'm gonna go ahead and mark lines. This will also tell me what those siding, if the siding's gonna work or if it needs to be ripped. Now, full disclosure, each of these is two foot. Each step down is exactly two feet. At the time that we laid this out, we were going six inch reveals on our siding, but we don't really like the way that looks. And it works out to be six and three quarters. That works out to be better when we go to install the, um, the vent fans for like 
your uh, bathroom fans. So anyway, it's just an aesthetics thing. So I need to figure out, will the piece of siding need to be ripped or will it not need to be ripped? Now, before I install my five quarter by four trim pieces that my siding will butt to, Kyle and I are gonna go ahead and we're gonna just start snapping lines. Pro tip, if you get two brand new chalk lines and you tie them together and you put the same color chalk in both, then you don't have to walk back and forth to each other. Now, we used to do that way back in the day. I don't really know why we stopped, but I think it's probably time to get back into that habit because then we, I could roll from my side and get fresh line. Kyle could roll from his side and get fresh line and we wouldn't have to walk back and forth. The advantage of walking back and forth is then we get our step count. And it's all about step count. Now you can see what I mean by, there's a whole lot of prep that needs to happen before we actually start installing siding. Layout, we're gonna snap lines. This is gonna make the siding itself very productive. Of course, we had windows to set, windows to trim. We had windows to flash, you know, head flashing to put over the window trim, etc. And so really most of the work in siding, kind of like everything in life, it's the prep, right? Kind of like you cook a meal, <laughs> takes three minutes to eat it, and then it takes another half an hour to clean up. Anyway, okay, so now we're here to the step downs. What I'm trying to do for LP instructions, I ha also have to maintain a 3 8 gap from the bottom of the siding to the metal head flashing. So I measured down 7 and 7 eighths. You saw me measure 3 eighths. Then I go ahead and I cut this piece so that it's gonna be right there, usually just a hair under that line because you gotta account for the thickness of the metal. I also made sure that I had a full 7 and 7 eighths below that bottom blue line. That way the siding comes about flush with that piece of five quarter by which was scrap from the window. Now those ends need to be primed, and I like to prime the top even though it's gonna get metal. Make sure that when you're using LP Smart Side and there is no sealant, that you prime or paint those cut ends. So same thing here. I'm gonna put a mark seven and seven eighths and align it with that blue line at the bottom, and then I'm gonna mark it to the top. Then I'm gonna go, should I just cut it one lower and let the siding run through? Which in fact is what I can do. So seven and seven eighths down, and that, that piece of siding is going to fully cover my uh, fence trim tape. And then another 3 eighths. Now I can line up the 7 and 7 eighths. You know, and you, get, you get the point. So you just work our way down. This is why we uh, trim the windows first. Then the scraps can go into pieces like this for the step down. And while I'm doing this, Kyle's cutting a bunch of 3 and a half inch pieces of metal, folding the tabs up 3 eighths of an inch. He's going to put that on top of this piece. And then we're going to tape that to the, um, to the zip panel. Sausages, sausages. Do you get that reference? I will give you a hint, kids in the hall. <laughs> okay, so this is liquid flash in a sausage pack, and that's a sausage gun. Because of the way we're thermally breaking the slab from the exterior, I had to bolt a piece of pressure treated wood that is going to hold the slider. Now I just used some excess 5 8 um, Simpson Strong Tie Titan bolts we put some PVC membrane behind that too, because then that gives us an option of integrating something for further waterproofing when we actually go to pour the, the patio. So this is liquid flash. As you can see, it comes out like very thick caulking, and then you just tool it around everything. I elected to use this just because this is the weather side of the house under the deck. And I just, it was so, you can see all the irregularity to the shapes. I could have used a tape product as well, but I felt like this was a good opportunity to use it. And we will leave it there. That was part one. In the next video, that. as you can see, we're going to start getting into some of the installation. So stay tuned for that. I mean, honestly, as of the voiceover, this next week is going to be a lot more install. Got some footage of this back wall. But we've got the whole front to do. And it's just been, oh man, getting garage slabs poured. Just a bunch of stuff that have all had to coalesce so that we can finally get the front. Can you eyeball so it? anyway, we will see you in the next video. Please hit that like and subscribe button. It really does help the channel out. Uh, I really appreciate it. And as always, please right, comment below if you have constructive criticism. If you're just being lame and you just want to be that guy, then head on over to the Perkins Builder Brothers or uh, RR Building, <laughs> Kyle Steppenhorst page, and tell them Tim sent you. Go ahead and leave your troll comments over there. Um, they're a lot more patient than I am. So anyway, we'll see you in the next video. 
Thank you for watching.